Welcome to Cheap Controls. We make videos on things that we struggled with, hoping to help you so you don't. Consider subscribing and hitting that bell. In this video, I'm going to go over this Shelly device. This device is an online wireless relay that you can control through Wi-Fi. I also want to set up a way to read some temperature and some other sensors into an action display that's connected remotely. And I thought this was just a good device to get started. But I want to show a video on the devices I'm using because I'd also like to get some feedback from people out there that maybe use these devices. In the old days, I tried some X10 devices. They didn't work as well as I would have liked. And then I looked at a Sonoff device and I didn't really care for it. I even got like a Mose switch and tried messing with that, but that didn't really work. This one seemed to be about the best. Connecting it to the app was relatively easy. I'm not going to go over that in this video. I didn't really have any problems with that. If people do have problems and they want another video on that, put a comment in the link and I'll consider making one. But the problems that I had was connecting the wiring. And I don't know if it's because this is a European com company, but I did have some questions on connecting the input and output in comparison to the switching. And I'm going to go over that today. And I'm also going to cover how you do it through a web interface. This is the initial instructions that I read from Shelly. And some of it makes perfect sense, but another part of it I just questioned and it took me a little time to set it up. But you have your neutral that comes in here and then your line. And I'm in America and I know I have an international audience, but I'll be using 120 volts AC. And then you take your line and you run it over to your switch. So you turn off and on the device by connecting 120 volts into the switch input. But my question was in this I and the O. I thought what, would gonna, what was going to happen was when I flipped the switch, 120 volts would come out of this I and O. But then after seeing this, I thought, well, maybe when you flip the switch, 120 volts comes out of the, let's say, I. And when you flip the switch off, 120 volts comes out of O. So I thought maybe there were different options. And as it turns out, it's just a relay contact. So when you make this contact here when you put 120 volts in this is just shorted out so essentially what you do is you take your line voltage and you put it into this input and then you have your output to your motor and then this goes over to your neutral at on the other side of the motor and i'm going to pull up a drawing that i made of my circuit next so this is how i have mine wired up and I, I have my earth ground which comes through my switch but there is no earth ground input on the Shelly device so it goes from the switch over to the light. The line level or the hot is black the white is your neutral and so I have my neutral coming in and I did have I show it going into the switch because that's the way I have it and then I have a pigtail in the switch and then it comes back out and I have it go to the neutral on the Shelly and the neutral in the light. And then I have this in blue, but it goes back around and into the output of the Shelly. I have my hot coming in and I have it going to the switch. And then I have the switch hot coming out to the switch here, to the switch input on the Shelly. And then I also have the hot going to the line here on the Shelly and the input on the Shelly. So when I make this contact, when this goes closed, this shorts and it makes my hot go up to the light and it makes the circuit. And now that I know how it's wired and I know how it functions, it works really, really well. I'm really happy with it. Now, I have only had it in place for a few weeks now, but it's been it's been solid. And the thing that I like about it is that you have the switch here. So what you essentially do is you put the Shelly in line with it. And if you didn't know the Shelly device was there, you wouldn't know that it was in place because you can just turn the light on and off with the switch. But then you can also use an app on your phone or a web URL to control the light. Now, in my case, I use 12 gauge stranded wire. And it barely fit into these terminals. So I had to take my hot or my line and I have a pigtail over in the switch over here and I have separate lines going to my in 
or my input and my line. So I didn't jumper it at the Shelly. But it did take the 12 gauge stranded just fine. I, mean, I don't think you would need that much, but in, in my house and in my location, all of my wiring has to be done with 12 gauge wire or 20 amp circuits. Now this is in an action, and just like the drawing I just showed you, I have the switch. Now normally this Shelly device would be inside the box, but I have it out just for my own reference, and so I could put my meter on it and measure some voltages. Because originally when I set this up, I was not sure how, how it was configured. But like I said, if you just flip the switch on and off, it just works like a light switch. So for people that aren't tech savvy in your house, they don't have to use it. Now, this is what the app looks like. And like I said, this was very simple to set up. When you first get the device and you plug it in, a little light will start flashing on the back of it. And that means that it's kind of looking for something to sync to. And um, you, it uses Bluetooth and it finds it right away and it adds very easy. But just like before, you just hit the button because I have the device right in here and I can turn it on and off. Now the switch is on right now. So if I turn the light off here, if I turn the light switch off here, this still thinks it's on. So if someone comes into the house, they'll have to turn the light switch off and then turn it back on to get it on. And it's the same when it's in the other state. It's on now. So if I want to turn it off, to turn it on and then turn it off. But I don't think that's too big of an inconvenience for people. It just takes a little while to get used to. But the main focus of this to tie it into the Nexion is to use it in a web URL. So I'm going to show you that next. I typed in the one first that turns it off, and it's already in the off state. So to turn it on, you just have to change it to on. And you can see that it changed to on. Now, once again, the switch is out of, out of whack on it, but, but it works pretty well. Um, the thing too you get is you get feedback from the switch. So you can see when you send the command, you get a reply back that either it's on or it's off. You get the state of the timer. And I haven't really messed with any of this yet, but it says what the timer started at, the timer duration, it gives you a lot of information. And this is, was the most basic Shelly device that I could find. So I'm assuming that if I had a, a more feature-rich Shelly device, I would get more back. Another command is toggle. And you can see in the URL, I don't know if you're familiar with it or not, but this is just a simple get request. So I believe if I take the connection device, I can hook it with an ESP, connect it to the Wi-Fi, and just send some simple requests. And now when I refresh it, I toggle the light. And I'm hoping that this series begins with this, but really evolves on, because Shelly has another um, module that looks just like this, but it, can, it will keep track of the power usage. I don't think it keeps a history of the power usage, but you can read the power usage that is going to passing through the switch at any point. And so I'm hoping to maybe have some sort of power monitoring device and then be able to track it and then use the waveform in the action to display it over time. But this could be a, a pretty interesting series. Also, the plan is to tie in a temperature sensor to this. And next week, I'm going to have a video on that. And I'm going to use a different device. It's a SEED device, and it is an ESP32C6. I'll probably be repeating some of my older videos with this new series, but I know there's a lot of people that didn't see the older ones. So I'm going to show how you transmit data back and forth between the Nexion display and a device. I'll also try to throw in some feedback and some settings, things like that. And I might even show a connection light to show that the Nexion is connected, or if it becomes disconnected for some reason, I'll have some indication of that. This series should be a lot of fun. Well, that's about it for this video. If you like what you saw, consider giving me a thumbs up, and also consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching.